Institute of Technology, Nagpur. This video shows our work on the development of substitute eyes for blind. According to the statistics from the World Health Organization, there are 39 million people in the world who are blind. We believe as an engineer it is our responsibility to develop technology to help the needy. With this thought in mind, we came up with the idea to develop substitute eyes for the blind. To achieve this goal, we decided to make a blind navigator which will help the blind people to navigate independently from one place to another. This project is given as an entry to the TI India Analog Design Contest 2012-2013 under Professor K. M. Burchandi from the Electronics and Communication Department of PNID Nagpur. We wanted our blind navigator to be not only accurate but also very comfortable and easy to use. It should also be easy to implement. So to cut down on the cost, we made use of the Android platform. As we have seen that Android cell phones have become very common in our country. So the application can be informed, installed on any Android device. Now the role of this application is to use GPS, GSM and GPRS modes to get the location of the person and generate a trajectory. And it will also give light, light directions via voice command to the blind. At the same time, the blind people need to inf be informed about the lo local obstacles such as wall, walls or potholes and our embedded device will come into action for the same purpose. This is the embedded device which will be used to detect the local obstacle. It consists of the power supply, two ultrasonic sensors and the entire circuit which will be explained later. These are the three vibrator motors which we have used. As you can see the device is also very comfortable to wear and it can be used to detect the obstacles at all the angles as the person wishes to use it. The ultrasonic sensor works on the principle of transmitting ultrasonic sound and if the obstacle is present the sound will be reflected back to the receiver and we measure the time which is taken by the sound to travel its path. And basically we find the distance of the ob obstacle by applying the formula distance is equal to speed into time. The disadvantage of using an ultrasonic sensor is it has a very narrow range. Now we have overcome this problem by using two ultrasonic sensors. As you can see we have a wider range by using two ultrasonic sensors but another advantage of using this design is we can also get an approximation of the location of the obstacle whether it's lying in region 1, 2 or 3. To interface ultrasonic sensors and vibrating motors we have designed a circuit and implemented that on PCB. Now I will explain the circuit. This circuit contains MSP430 G2553 as our microcontroller and TI voltage regulator US7805 CKCS and our ultrasonic sensor HCSR04 and TI operational amplifier OPA227P. As our microcontroller MSP430 works on 3.3 volt while our ultrasonic sensor requires 5 volt power supply and it gives 5 volt output. So to convert 5 volt output to 3.3 volt we have used combination of register divider circuit and operational amplifier. The output of register divider circuit is given to the operational amplifier. This operational amplifier is used in non-inverting configuration and unity gain feedback. The main use of operational amplifier is to increase the stability and lower the in output impedance and to increase input impedance. 5 volt power supply to the circuit is given by 9 volt radio battery via 7805 voltage regulator and 3.3 power supply to the MSP430 is given by 2 AA batteries used in series. This is the setup to test the algorithm of our device. We have given the PWM output of the vibrator motors to the LEDs. 
Hence, the three LEDs represent the three vibrator motors. We will now move an obstacle in different directions to test our algorithm. As you can see, the wooden plank is our obstacle, and as we are moving it away from the device, the frequency of the intensity of the LEDs is changing. Now, as I move it close, the LED becomes more and more bright. If we shift the wooden plank laterally, we can see that as I move the plank towards the right, the right LED is glowing, and on going further away, it's becoming less bright. Now moving on the left side, the left LED is glowing. So hence, the person using the device can also get an approximation of the direction of the wooden plank. This is the app that we have made in Android. It has two buttons: get location and browse. The upper one and the lower one. Now we can reset the values of all the locations and the destination by long tapping the bottom one, like this. Values reset. Now I will enter my current location by tapping the upper button. Please enter the start position. V N I T guest house. As you can see, it has detected VNIT guest house. Now I will tap the upper button to set my destination. Please enter the destination. VNIT main building. Now VNIT main building has been detected and set as my destination. Please wait. It is asking me to wait till it calculates my shortest path to the destination. And to do this, we have mainly used the Google APIs of voice recognition, so that just by saying the name of the location and the destination, we can get the trajectory. This is my current location, and it has calculated the path. We will now do a field testing of the device, for which we have blindfolded a person, and he is using the device in his right hand and our Android app in the cell phone on the left hand. The person intends to navigate from the VNIT guest house to the VNIT main building. We will now demonstrate how the blind navigator can help the person to complete his journey independently without taking help from anyone else.
Hence the device has helped the person to reach the VNIT main building independently.